our art talk with Mr. Sam Williams. Um, Sam is part of Black Belt Treasures and Kristen. Kristen, can you give us a little bit more information? Yes, welcome everybody. Um, Mr. Sam Williams, I'm sorry, I'm not supposed to call him Mr. Sam, that was his dad. Uh, Sam has been with us since just about the beginning when we opened in 2005. He is an absolute uh, master at the pottery wheel. He's also one of the best storytellers we have around. Uh, very entertaining and a lot of fun. Uh, he has recently moved his studio up to our new of ceramic studio space that we just finished building right before COVID hit. And we all just absolutely love having Sam up here about three days a week. He's here every other Wednesday to talk with customers and to demonstrate his pottery techniques. And um, he's just one of our most popular potters we have ever had here and continue every year to be one of our best sellers in the entire gallery. He makes functional wear, but also it's functional wear with an attitude and um, a little bit of humor mixed in, but also some of the most beautiful, well-made pottery you will see. So without further ado, Sam Williams. Hey, everybody. Hi, hey, Sam. Tell everybody a little bit. Give them, give them your basic story. Uh I've been making pottery for 46 years. My father said we needed to learn how, and they were teaching lessons at a junior college in Bruton, Alabama, 40 miles from where I live. I'm from Monroeville, Alabama. And I started taking lessons over there, and I took to the next 20 years till Larry retired. It, it's called going over and using uh, state equipment, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Actually, I'm a biology major uh, out of college, but I uh, no, never used that. I thought I was going to be a doctor, but I made a D in four semester German, so they took care of being a doctor. So now I'm, a, I'm retired and I'm a full time potter. And I Very like cool. Well, how long have you been uh, doing this? Uh, I started in 75. That was 46 years ago. And oh wow! After I, after I retired from a real job, I opened a studio in Monroeville and closed it three years ago at, uh, due to the condition of the building and everything. And uh, when they opened up a studio up here in the back of Black Belt uh, Cultural Arts Center, uh, they let me have put my wheel and my kill up here. And I come up here anywhere from three to five days a week and. They give me the run of the place, and I get to come back here and make all the pottery I want. That's awesome. So, Kristen, why did you uh, connect with uh, Sam and make that happen? Because Sam has, he's been a part of our family since he started here. Um, I was here before she was. He was. He was here before me. I moved back from Virginia in 2009 and he was already a part of the family and he welcomed me in and um, we just when it opened up that his studio just wasn't providing for him and he kept having issues and problems and we knew we were creating this space and i mean my degree is in ceramics and art history and i knew we were going to put a pottery studio in here so we designed it with the intention of it being a home a second home for both sam and i so um, we we knew all along it was a dream to have him come up here this often and uh, we hope to grow this where he's able to do more demonstrations and more workshops and classes and uh, as many as he wants to where it doesn't become a job because we know he is retired <laughs> gotta have this fun time and we don't want becky to be too upset with us for keeping <laughs> here too much but now becky's his wife right my real job, I was a lingerie salesman with uh, <laughs> Vanity Fair uh, mm -hmm. selling to department stores, but we all know what's happening to department stores. So, mm -hmm. anyhow, that, that, that's all in my past. Yeah. Um, a neat little fact is my mother was one of the Vanity Fair sewers as a young girl. It, it, what, what location? Baldwin County, Silver Hill. 
Uh, she was at Robertsdale. Yes. I started to work in Robertsdale six days out of college in December of 66. Oh, wow. And stayed down there three and a half years in manufacturing before mm -hmm. I got moved up to headquarters in Monroeville. And a year or two after that, uh, I liked the way this. I want to be a salesman, so I, they let me go into sales, and I uh, was into sales almost to the end of my career. Then I just got into marketing. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but anyhow, that's all history now. Yeah. So, how did you make the leap from that to pottery? Well, uh, my father had a farm supply store, and he bought everything old, including every old crock and churn and jug he could find. And it's now called folk pottery. I've got over a hundred pieces that he bought in wow. a collection. And he said, we need to learn how to do this. And I found out they were teaching lessons over in Britain, Alabama. So we both signed up and started taking pottery lessons the same night. I loved it and he loved it. And he did it uh, up till he died in uh, about 1990. Wow. And I'm still doing it. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Are you it or is there a, another person learning that you're instructing? Is Kristen your student? No, Kristen's a good <laughs> potter. Uh, I, 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 she'll tell you, I try to correct you and she tells me, shut up. But uh, other than that. We correct each other. We give each mm -hmm. other pointers. But I, I like teaching people to make pottery uh one of my favorite potters and i don't know how many workshops i've gone to uh, uh randy brodnick uh out of louisiana and he taught uh, pottery in texas and now he's just a potter and he's on the kind of the lecture circuit and workshop circuit uh he told me he said sam nothing you know is secret everything you know somebody else taught you and you need to pass that knowledge along so right. i'm a firm believer in whatever i know and i can impart to others i believe in doing that uh i want somebody years from now to say well sam williams got me into making pottery and i love it mm -hmm. and we actually already hear that we have a another one of our really good potters, Miss Becky Blaylock. She's from uh, Selma in Dallas County, Alabama. Actually, she's from Valley Brand. But she came down here while she was a school teacher in Dallas County and uh, saw Sam at one of our festivals demonstrating pottery. And he let her sit down and try it. And she said she was hooked. This was somewhere probably wow. around 2006 or 2007. She went to. Um, as a school teacher, she went and audited a class at Montevallo and learned to throw. She retired probably about eight or nine years ago and is now second to Sam, one of our most popular potters. She makes the most beautiful functional wear. And it's popular with gifts and everything. But she owes it all to Sam, inspiring her and letting her sit down and try it out. And um, it really is addictive. That's so, why, Emma, you need to take a pottery lesson before you graduate. <laughs> I uh, just have to do that, won't I? Yeah. Emma, do you have a question? What's your favorite kind of pottery to make? Uh, mm -hmm. I don't have a favorite type. I, for 25 years, I basically did uh, wheel work. And after that, I started doing uh, a lot of hand build. Now I do wheel work and then add on to it with hand building or the double jug in the background back here that's uh it's a wheel thrown jug that I've, I've added a few adornments to and my wife says they're ugly they're not called ugly jugs that's their ugly and if you live up in uh the carolinas and uh you love them if you live down this way they're not near as popular but i, I like making them Here's one he, two days ago. It may have been the reason we had such bad storms. I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's all Sam's fault. Paula, while we're talking, I'm going to make a little simple piece here. Uh, I can talk okay. About, 
this won't distract me. So uh, he can talk. Okay. And make it the same. If you if you have a question about what I'm doing, and I'm using actually, I don't recommend this for beginners, Potter. But once you know how to open and center an open clay, then I use it making mugs. And I, I I'm not making a mug now, but I just push this down in the middle and. I'm opening the clay up. I've got about a fourth of an inch shorter centerpiece, so it leaves a fourth of an inch in the bottom. And I, I have centered this uh, piece of clay. Now I'm going to pull up the sides. You mash on the inside and you mash on the outside and you bring your hand up and the clay magically just rises up. Every once in a while you hear somebody say, well, isn't that cheating? But it's not. All tools were created for a purpose and you still have to be talented and know what you're doing to use any tool. Not to mention tools like that are great for people who maybe have arthritis or a problem with their hands and it can help um, you active and keep you doing pottery for many more years. Your hands are tools. Anything that yeah. helps you do work is a tool. Plus we use all these kind of tools, so what's the difference, right? Very true. I did this piece of pipe that I just used. I, I got it off the internet. Some old potter in North Carolina was doing it. Now I'm going to take, I've thrown a cylinder. This is called a throwing stick. You put it down inside and you want to pull up, but I'm going to use the, the other, the handle end of it and lay this over. And if this falls down and flops, it doesn't bother me. I've done, I've, I've made many mistakes. Best way to learn. Mm -hmm. I tell my pottery students that all the time when they make a mistake. I'm like, but did you learn something? And are you ever going to do it again? And usually they're like, no, I learned how much pressure to push or which direction to go. Or every mistake causes you to learn you're too thin, your walls are too thin. Or mm -hmm. And that, I got it too thin at the bottom. It didn't work that well, but... I'm, I'm wide this up when we get through so it doesn't make any difference. I was going to say, he made, he made this one the same exact way, right? Works. Oh, I didn't use it. Anyhow, that's uh. Where's the cutting wire? Christian. Very cool. Well, um, while you're working on that, let's see. Um, let's see. You said you tried different uh, materials before you did pottery and you fell in love with pottery. What was that process? So you said you tried um, glass blowing, I think. No, no. I've you said tried. you tried no, painting. I, I, I started out, I had, a art, uh, not, I had a second grade teacher and she actually got me interested in drawing and uh, doing probably finger pick painting or whatever it was in the second grade. And now I can't mm -hmm. sit down with a piece of paper and a pen and not want to draw a picture. I draw on the shower mm -hmm. or glass door in the morning in the condensation. I just before I get out, I've got to draw some little picture in there. So and very some cool. Of his, he's drawn. Um, he draws a lot of fish, crabs, shrimp. Um, what else on your pottery? It, 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 wood ducks, uh, things that are easy to draw, and uh, once you learn how to draw them. But uh, if you have a, a platter and you add. Uh, <laughs> a few little drawn pieces around the outside mm -hmm. i'm in the marketing now uh i'm on my marketing uh stool 
uh, that platter is going to sell for 10 or 15 more dollars more than if it was just plain and didn't have any pictures around the, uh, the inside. Mm -hmm. and, and you can do those pictures in two or three minutes and you, you're through. But you, you've okay. added another 10 or 15 dollars to your piece of pottery. It retails. Like, um, let's see. Let me bring, see if I can bring up one of your pieces. Like this one? Is this one? This one, let's see. That one? Yeah, that, that's just a platter. Okay, but you added this unique detail, these different colors to it? Uh, okay, the process on pottery, you take raw clay. Uh, clay is aluminum silicate. It, it's aluminum and, aluminum and uh, silica, which is sand. Mm -hmm. Glass is made from sand. Uh, it comes out of the earth, you make it, you shape it, you form it, you put it in the kill. And uh, I fired up to about 1830 something degrees without a glaze on it. Then mm -hmm. I take it back out and I put a glaze, which is a mixture of different clays and chemicals. And it gives it kind of a glass like surface and you put different uh, chemicals in, uh, Oxides, and, Oxides and things in it to make it uh, colorful. You put it on it and then you refire it up to about 2230 something degrees and it becomes vitrified, which means uh, it doesn't absorb moisture anymore, even under the bottom where it's not glazed. <coughs> Excuse me. But uh, that's, that's the process. Okay. Uh, what you're looking at it's just a platter with uh, three different glazes on it, overlapping mm -hmm. one over the other. That was a platter, and then I took a little coil of clay, twisted it two or three times, and put it on each side for a handle. Very cool. Handle, it's a very nice piece. Uh, marketing handles add another <laughs> five to ten dollars to a piece of pottery that you can pick it up with. So uh, cool. I've got to pay for my hat. Somehow or another. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I want to bring up this one because this is one of your uh, neat ones. Okay. You like the um, the devils and the and the face pieces? I see a lot of I those, love, like the one you have behind you. I love the face pieces. Uh, there's one behind me that uh, I just made yesterday. There's another one that uh, I made uh, in the past. It's, it's glazed, and then I rubbed part of the glaze. Oh, that's not it. Uh, that's just the raw piece I made yesterday. You throw a jug, and then you hand build uh, the face, the horns, the lips, the eyes, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, on it. Okay, so so how do you what'd you come up with this design from um was this just something you drew one day or and, and they all they're also very different so you don't have two that are the same that one's a portrait of me I, i'm not <laughs> a good, i'm not a good enough potter to exactly duplicate what i've made before so what i'm making is some of what i've made before but i don't try to duplicate anything Mm -hmm. I just want to put a nose and a mouth, et cetera, and in some shape, fashion, or form on things. And uh, I, I've made uh, face jugs of Obama. I've made face jugs of Hillary. I've made face jugs of Trump. And you can look at the face jug and recognize and know who I, who I was making a face jug of. That's amazing. I, 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 good at drawing caricatures so i go on the internet and look up cartoons and caricatures of people that people have done of, of different celebrities mm -hmm. and they accentuate the ears the mouth the nose the hair the whatever and then i can copy that into clay and okay and something looks like them. uh i haven't done a Biden piece yet but i guess i will uh, mm -hmm. very cool I had made it look like uh, his eyes are closed and he's sleepy yet. I've been working on that. <laughs> um, here's another jug that I thought was really cool that you've done. Oh, where'd it go? 
That one. Well, it then has a brown glaze on it, and I put white porcelain slip, which is clay and water, over the horns and the uh, the teeth. Uh, I put a brown glaze over the rest of the jug, and then wiped off part of it to give it highlights over the uh, eyes and the nose. Mm -hmm. and very, very cool. It, it comes out that way, and. That jug, until it's broken, will be here till uh, that big sun up the sky uh, implodes <laughs> and burns us all up. Mm -hmm. uh, acid will hurt that piece of pottery. Termites won't eat it. It will break. Mm -hmm. That's the only reason I get to make more mugs is people drop mugs, break mugs, take them out of the dishwasher too fast and <laughs> knock the handle off on the granite countertop. And uh, I don't repair mugs. I, I want to sell them a new mug. Well, yeah. yeah. Really anyway. Yeah. No, the uh, the mugs are um, so they're washable and um, microwavable and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, He's got one in his hand right now. Okay. Those are you can. Uh, oh wow. The, uh, the mug is just a little clay cylinder that you've added a handle to, and it goes in the microwave. Well, we lost sound. Um, something just went. Maybe it'll come back. Hello? Yeah, I know. We lost sound. I just sent her a message. Okay. Uh, sorry, everybody. We just lost sound for a second. We're streaming from the, uh, from the uh, Alabama Delta, so this sometimes happens. So just be patient. We'll see if we can get the sound back on. Thank you. Hello, can uh, let's see. She's trying different settings. Oh, while she's figuring that out, we will switch out and show another of his pieces. Um, during this week um, with the USA Libraries Art Galleries, we are featuring his work, and uh, this is one of them. He talked about how he has pottery that is serviceable. So you see honey. You see this one, which is honey and butter that can be used and uh, microwaved if you need it or um, used in a variety of methods. Let's okay. Yeah, we're okay. back. Very cool. A phone call tried to come in and it, it totally knocked us off. Um, ah, well, that's less the things we learn while we are live streaming and while we do this. We learn all the time. We grow from learning. That's what we have to remember. <laughs> yeah, if there's anyone out there, don't call me right now. <laughs> uh, well, uh, just so you know, we do have some people watching from Monroeville. Um, I've shared the uh, the live stream to a variety of people, and so we've got we do have an audience. Well, so. I've lived in Monroe for seventy six years, going on seventy seven this month. So, mm -hmm. oh well, then if they're, if they're old, I probably know them. If they're young, <laughs> <laughs> very cool. Well, I have up here some of your honey and butter pots, and um, the other pots you have up here at the top. Um, I have those showing. Um, I was telling everybody that this week we're featuring your artwork. There's the frog. Let me see if I can get the frog to move. That's a toothpick holder. Oh, that's so cool. Now, what are these things next to him? Paula, in front of the toothpick holder, there are what uh, two little um, interesting pieces that were one of Sam's experiments this year. And... They're actually sweet gum balls that he dipped in slip to make them into um, oh, COVID little COVID balls. Oh my goodness. 
That's the only original thing I have ever done. I looked at, I've got a bowl in my living room, obviously a pottery bowl, and it's full of sweet gum balls. I pick them up in my yard and on my driveway and on my deck. One day, I said, that looks like little COVID viruses. So I dipped them in slip a time or two and then fired them. And of course, the sweet gum ball burns out. Uh-huh. And then I put them in a blue glaze and put a little red highlight on them. Put them on stilts in the kill and fired them. And uh, to my knowledge, those are the only ceramic uh, COVID viruses in the, <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Very neat. Very neat. Now the the frog, um, you didn't throw him on the wheel, did you? The, that's a. I made it on the wheel, then I took it off. I tapped down one side and squeezed the mouth in to give it a mouth, mm-hmm. and an arms and a leg. That was a hand. That was a thrown piece with the uh, add-ons. Okay. Very very neat. Oh, um, okay. Let's see. Let me let me look at some of the questions I have uh, for you. Uh, what is the most challenging part of selecting materials to use in your pottery? I use bulk clay. You can. I've got clay on my property I can use. I've made pieces of pottery for other people from clay from their property. They wanted to give their children <laughs> something that came from their farm or plantation. But I don't like using uh, dug clay. It's it's a lot of work. I'd rather just buy it uh, ready prepared. It comes in 50 pound boxes and 25 pound bags. You open it up and you use it. And okay. Do you? Where do you buy it from? Uh, I buy most of what I get from. It comes from Southern Ceramic Supply in Baton Rouge. It's called Alligator Clay. Okay. And I don't go over there anymore. Uh, I'm buying it through the kill room in Fairhope. She has a studio over in Ocean Springs and Mm -hmm. uh, she'll bring, uh, when I tell her I need some, she'll bring some over to Fairhope and I pick it up over there. All right, very cool. Now, how do you like organize, plan and prioritize your work? Like, Like, how do you know what you're going to make? Oh, uh, we tell him. No, I'm just joking. I, I get, I get told, uh, uh, Sue Lynn, uh, it's over this whole place up here. She told me the other day, we need uh, more face jugs. We need this. Well, you, your table's <laughs> getting low up front. And uh, I do a lot of stuff that's people call this. Uh, a lady was in here this morning. In fact, she works in here some. Uh, runs a bread and breakfast, among other things, and uh, she wanted some escargo uh, dishes. So uh, I'd never made escargo dishes before, but I made escargo dishes. <laughs> and, Very uh, cool. Uh, things like that. People want a platter. Uh, there's a platter behind uh, Christian back there. Uh, some of the, a lady came in here and she brought a piece of embroidery that. Uh, a crochet or whatever it is that has been passed down in her family for generation to generation. And I incorporated it into a platter for her. Now that wow. Uh, this is a prime example of, you were asking about some of the challenges. Um, this one's actually one of the ones he wasn't able to use. He's made this three or four times and we've been having a challenge with cracks and uh ah hang out too fast in the new studio sometimes and so this one has a big crack that went this way and so he's had to remake this platter four times uh several times several times and i've made several of them now for uh, i'm making one very simple to make for somebody else here yeah. in town but once it's fired you can't reclaim your clay so if it cracks during the firing process you're just it's you know yeah hmm. it's gone I have a uh, a gully on the back side of my property in Monroeville, and there are hundreds of pieces of old broken pottery or pottery that I didn't like or the glaze didn't mm-hmm. work, and I don't want to sell anything that I'm not happy with. 
I don't mm-hmm. want five years from now go at somebody's yard sale and say they've got a piece of my pottery out there for two dollars because mm-hmm. they didn't like it. Uh, if I don't like it, it, it's probably in my belly, but you can't get to it because the cuts is drawn up over. <laughs> okay. Um, let's see. Um, how long does it take you to make your pieces? Well, I just, the piece that I, I wadded up a minute ago while we were off the air, mm-hmm. I went over and re wedged it. And that's the piece on the wheel in front of me now. Cool. And I just, just I, I threw it on the wheel, I centered it, I opened it up. Now I'm pulling up the walls. And Emma, do you have any questions? From there, it'll dry for sometimes a week. It depends on how thick it is. And then mm-hmm. it will be fired the first time, the bisque firing. And I- then he'll glaze it or decorate it and uh, fire it again. So for the entire process from start to finish can be as short as if you're, if you don't have a lot to do, it can be as short as a week or a week and a half, but it can be two to three weeks just on um, how much you have to do. Now I took that bowl I was just throwing and I took the stick and I laid the sides over while opening it up. And I mentioned uh, I like to draw things around it. Now I'm mm-hmm. going to take a little tool, a little silicone tip. And uh, I'm gonna draw some fish in this. I'll hold this up to the camera in a minute, Christian. I kind of quit talking when I'm drawing. I kind of like to concentrate. It's okay. Um... Let's see, what are common issues with throwing clay? I know you talked about how it could just fall apart at any moment, but are there any other issues? It's always issues. It does stuff you don't know it's going to do. Clay has a mind of its own. You just have to kind of, but I've been married for uh, almost 53 years. So you just kind of go with the flow do what the clay tells you to or do what your wife tells you to and uh it, it seems to work okay um let's see what's another good question uh what do students most often have trouble with when beginning to work with clay the process of making pottery you you take a piece of clay and you wedge it up if you were making uh rolls it's called wet it's called kneading the dough but in clay it's called wedging the clay you're you're bending it over each other and getting it together or you want the moisture the content and everything the same inside now you've got a ball of clay you put it on your wheel and you you've got to center it that's the hardest part to learn and until you get a piece of clay centered you're not going to make a piece of pottery. Right. But once you get it centered, you put your hand in it, open it up, go down and leave a, a quarter inch to a three quarters of an inch bottom in it, depending on whether you want to trim out under the bottom or just leave it flat. And then you push your fingers in, inside and outside at the bottom, and it makes a little groove. You get a ridge of clay on the top of that groove you bring your hands up and the pottery comes up uh and that's that's just the process so yeah as he said i'll tell you i have a two current groups of students some who have taken before and then others that have, are about on their third week of taking pottery classes and they'll tell you they have learned very quickly that if you cannot center you're going to have a piece that's thick on one side, thin on the other. It's going to collapse as you raise it up. Um, centering is one of the most important steps in pottery. Once you master centering, you can you can do a lot. Uh, it's definitely one of the most challenging parts. 
It's fun watching him just uh, manipulate the plans and drawings. I hope this one's gonna be kept. Maybe someone can uh, purchase this piece after it's fired and glazed. If it Definitely. If it doesn't fall off the wheel. <laughs> Uh, wow. Fall off, not fall off the wheel, but here you go. This. I've got a bat on the wheel. And that doesn't want to come up no. Here, I'll just hold it over. Leave it. It's fine. We'll just we'll do this so everybody can see it. Oh, uh. There we go. Oh, I've, cool. I've drawn some little fish swimming around. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, I'll let it dry overnight. Tomorrow, I'll flip it upside down and I'll trim out part of the, around the foot at the bottom to refine that. And then I'll come back and put a handle on each side. And uh, you've got something to hold it by and pick it up by. And it, it also makes it look better. So that's. You ask how long does it take to make a piece of pottery? Uh, I'm not running my mouth, you make a piece of pottery in a matter of uh, just a few minutes. Okay. Well, you've, you've had a lot of practice, though. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have one other thing that I love to do, and that's cooking. I have a lot of practice there. So, uh -huh. very cool. You don't follow recipes. My wife wants me to buy all the groceries and do all the cooking. And she takes care of the yard and the house. and. We have a wonderful uh, relationship. Very much. And she's probably still in bed asleep right now. I mean, you know, uh, it's after, no, it's, a, it's after uh, 1 30. She probably got up around. Okay. We stayed up most of the night last night. We were worried about the weather. Oh, yeah. Yeah, very much so. Well, thank you so much for meeting with us and showing us how you make that beautiful piece. Um, I always ask one final question before we leave. What piece of advice would you like to give to uh, University of South Alabama students? Uh, ask that question again. What piece of advice would you like to give the University of South Alabama students? Go take a Tony Wright course and learn how. And if you want to learn how to play the harmonica, He'll do that too. He keeps one in his pocket and it, with any suggestion, he will pull it out and play you a song on it. Okay. It doesn't have anything to do with making pottery. <laughs> but seriously, mm -hmm. I don't care what you're majoring in, just go take a pottery class. When you mm -hmm. get old and ancient like I am and you're out of something to do and nobody wants to pay you to work anymore, you can fall back on that and make pottery, and it's it's absolutely wonderful. Your children love it, your grandchildren love it, and every now and then you get to sell a piece. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Well, thank you so much for uh, talking with us today, and we sure did enjoy spending time with you. Thank you so I, much. I, I appreciate it, and uh, you never did tell me who was watching from Monroe. Oh, um, they didn't give their name. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you later. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. And we'll see you next week.